Hello students, today we are going to discuss about what is called your Newton's Jewett theorem. Now what does this theorem states and how we will be benefited while solving quadratic equation problems with the help of Newton Jewett theorem. Newton Jewett theorem states that if ax square plus bx plus c equals to 0, if this quadratic equation has two roots, say alpha and beta, and let us say sn is equals to alpha to the power n plus beta to the power n. Then Newton Jewett theorem states that a sn plus b sn minus 1 plus c sn minus 2, this will be equals to 0. Now the question is, if we can prove this, first of all we will prove this theorem and then we will see how it helps us to solve quadratic equation problems in much quicker way. Our time will be saved in a great extent. But first of all, we have to prove that this theorem is true. Now, as alpha and beta are the two roots of this equation, so we can say that alpha plus beta is minus b over a and alpha beta is c over a. Now, let us take the left hand side of the given thing which we have to prove, this one. So it is a s n plus b s n minus 1 plus c s n minus 2. So I can write this thing like a alpha to the power n beta to the power n b alpha to the power n minus 1 plus beta to the power n minus 1, c alpha to the power n minus 2 plus beta to the power n minus 2. Now, since Sn is alpha to the power n plus beta to the power n, so Sn minus 1 will be alpha to the power n minus 1 plus beta to the power n minus 1 and Sn minus 2 will be alpha to the power n minus 2 plus beta to the power n minus 2. That's exactly what I have replaced here. Now, if I open the brackets, so we are getting and in the second bracket we are taking, right? Now, what I'm doing is from this one, from this bracket, we are taking alpha to the power n minus 2 common and from this bracket, we will take beta to the power n minus 2 common. And let us see what happens. If alpha to the power n minus 2 is taken common, so we are left with a alpha square plus b alpha plus c. Similarly, if I take beta to the power n minus 2 common from this bracket, we are left with b beta plus c. Now, as alpha and beta are the two roots of this equation, so we can say a alpha square plus b alpha plus c is equals to 0. At the same time, a beta square plus b beta plus c equals to 0. Therefore, this part is coming to 0, this part is coming to 0, therefore our answer is 0, which is nothing but your right hand side. So, we have proved newton Jewett theorem which states that if alpha beta are the two roots of this equation a x square plus b x plus c equals to zero then a s n plus b s n minus one plus c s n minus two will be equals to zero where s n equals to alpha to the power n plus beta to the power n now one very important thing i must mention here that even if it is minus then also Newton's Jigger theorem holds true, right? 
So whether it is plus or minus, this theorem holds true. Okay. Now the question comes, what is the utilization of newton Jewett theorem in theory of quadratic equation? The main advantage of this is that whenever they ask us to find out the sum of the roots which are having higher exponents. So to solve it very quickly, we can use newton Jewett theorem and we can solve it in an easier way and consuming much less time. Okay, let us take an example and let us demonstrate the theorem right here. See this question. It has been said that alpha beta are the roots of the equation 5x squared plus 6x minus 2 equals to 0. And sn equals to alpha to the power n plus beta to the power n. So which relation is true? This problem came in J Men 2020. Okay, so now you see how quickly and efficiently we can do this problem by using Newton's Jewett theorem. We have been stated in the Newton's Jewett theorem that if ax square plus bx plus c equals to 0, it has two roots alpha and beta. Then we can say that asn plus b s n minus 1 plus c s n minus 2 is equals to 0. Okay. Actually what I am doing here is, here there is a, b and c. Whatever are the coefficients of x square x and the constant term, we simply multiplied with s n, s n minus 1, s n minus 2. Now here there is a very very important step to be remembered that I have used here Sn, Sn minus 1, Sn minus 2. But if you wish, you can use any value of S. That is, if you want, you can write this thing in this way. A S N plus 1 plus B S N plus C S N minus 1. In that case also, you are going to have the same result which is equal to 0. Okay, so what I want to say is the higher suffix of n will be multiplied with a which is the coefficient of x square. The second highest suffix of n will be multiplied with b which is the coefficient of x and the least one of s suffix will be multiplied with the constant term c in this equation a x square plus b x plus c equals to 0. Okay. So in this case, in our problem, we are having a as 5, b as 6 and c as minus 2. So by Newton's Jigger theorem, we can state that 5 s n plus 6 s n minus 1 minus 2 s n minus 2 that can be written as equals to 0. Now you observe in place of n if I put 6 in place of n if I put 6 we are going to have 5 s 6 plus 6 s 5 minus 2 s 4 equals to 0 that implies 5 s 6 plus 6 s5 which is equals to 2 times s4 and option a is correct. Is it clear? So that is the power of Newton's Jewett theorem in finding out problems like this kind. Is it clear? Let me take another problem. This problem came in JMN 2021. They have said that alpha, beta are the two real numbers such that alpha plus beta is 1 and alpha, beta is minus 1. Therefore, the quadratic equation whose two roots will be alpha and beta are x square minus alpha plus beta x plus alpha, beta equals to 0. That implies x square minus x minus 1 equals to 0. So this equation, it has two roots, alpha and beta. Now they have said that p suffix n 
is alpha to the power n plus beta to the power n. And they have said that p n minus 1 is 11 and p n plus 1 is 29. Okay. Now we have to find out the value of p n square. Okay. So we have to find out the value of p n actually. The moment we get p n, we will simply square to get the answer. Now see by applying Newton's Dewar theorem, how quickly it can be done. As x square minus x minus 1 equals to 0, it has two roots alpha and beta. Therefore, we can say, see, among this three, pn, pn minus 1 and pn plus 1, the highest one is pn plus 1. So, we will write pn plus 1 from Newton's Dewar theorem, pn plus 1 minus pn minus pn minus 1 which is equals to 0. Right? pn plus 1 they have given it as 29. pn we have to find out and pn minus 1 it is given 11 which is equal to 0. So from here we can write pn is nothing but 18. See how quickly we got the value of pn? The moment we get the value of pn we can easily find out what is p n square, which is nothing but your 18 square that gives us 324. So option C is correct in this problem. That is the magic of Newton's Dewar theorem. Let us take a last example to illustrate this theorem more clearly. This question came in J Advanced 2011 and J Main 2015. They have said that alpha, beta are the roots of this equation. x square minus 6x minus 2 equals to 0. Here alpha and beta are the two roots where alpha is greater than beta. And they have said that a n equals to a suffix a n is alpha to the power n minus beta to the power n. And we have to find out the value of this expression, right? Now you see as I mentioned in the beginning, that Newton's Dewar theorem can be applied whether this is plus or minus. In both the cases, we can use this theorem. Here, n is alpha to the power n minus beta to the power n and the quadratic equation given to us is x square minus 6x minus 2 equals to 0. So, simply by applying Newton's Dewar theorem, we can say that a n minus 6 a n minus 1 minus 2 a n minus 2 that is equals to 0. Is it clear? Now in place of n I am putting 10. In place of n I am putting 10. You can ask me sir how you are getting this idea of putting n equals to 10 simply by looking this expression. The highest suffix of a is 10. That is why I am putting n equals to 10 over here. So what you are getting here? It's a 10 minus 6 a 9 minus 2 a 8 equals to 0. So, a 10 minus 2 a 8 is equals to 6 a 9. So, from here we can write a 10 minus 2 a 8 divided by 2 times a 9 is nothing but 3. Is it clear? So, see how quickly we got the answer how quickly we got the answer as 3 and the answer for this problem is 3 okay so this is the power of newton's dewar theorem suppose if any one of us doesn't know this theorem then how he or she will approach this problem look at carefully how many number of steps are involved if you don't know this method that is this newton's dewar theorem as alpha beta are the two roots of this equation, so we can write alpha square minus 6 alpha minus 2 is 0 at the same time beta square minus 6 beta minus 2 equals to 0. This method which I am doing right now are for those students who doesn't know Newton's Dewar theorem. Now, we have been said a n is alpha to the power n minus beta to the power n. So we can write a 10 is alpha to the power 10 minus beta to the power 10. Similarly, we can get a 8 is alpha to the power 8 minus beta to the power 8. 
Similarly, A9 is alpha to the power 9 minus beta to the power 9. Now, let me just put all the values that we got in our expression, required expression. So, in this case, we will write alpha to the power 10 minus beta to the power 10 minus 2 alpha to the power 8 minus beta to the power 8 whole divided by 2 times alpha to the power 9 minus beta to the power 9. Okay. Now, if I open the bracket and if we rearrange the data, we are having something like this. divided by 2 alpha to the power 9 minus beta to the power 9. So now from the first bracket, if we take alpha to the power 8 common, we are having alpha square minus 2. And from the second bracket, if we take beta to the power 8 common, so we are left with beta square minus 2, whole divided by 2 alpha to the power 9 minus beta to the power 9. Now, alpha square minus 2. From this equation, we can write alpha square minus 2 is 6 alpha. So, it is coming to alpha to the power 8 into 6 alpha. Similarly, it will be beta square minus 2 can be replaced from this equation and can be replaced by 6 beta. So, we are having 6 times beta divided by 2 times alpha to the power 9 minus beta to the power 9. So, in the numerator, we are having 6 if I take common, it is alpha to the power 9 minus beta to the power 9 divided by 2 times alpha to the power 9 minus beta to the power 9. As alpha is greater than beta, so it cannot be 0. I mean, the difference cannot be equals to 0, right? So I can divide it and I can cancel this too. So we are getting the answer as 3. We are getting the same answer, but see, the student who knows Newton's Givor theorem, he can do it in three steps. And the student who doesn't know this theorem, he has to go through all this long method to solve the problem. I hope, students, you have understood the Newton's Givor theorem and how to apply it in the problem. So, see you very soon in my next video.